new term in our safeguard series. Now we are talking about profiles. Profiles is something you can use in safeguard and you can first assign it to the partition. In reality, the first profile gets auto assigned in a way of you create our partition by clicking on a plus. And what happens there is that safeguard together with the partition just creates the first profile, which is named like the partition and the profile postfix. At the end, it is the standard profile of the created partition. Such a standard profile, as mentioned, exists automatically and it is assigned to the partition and with that automatically it gets as well assigned to each asset becomes member of that partition and to each account which is member of that specific asset. With that, the profile gets auto inherited from the partition down to the assets, down to the accounts of the assets automatically. With that, we can say each asset and each account, if it's part of a partition, automatically as well owns a profile. Now, you can as well define your custom profiles. Custom profiles are as well defined for the partition. You can define them in other places as well, but they are objects stored for the partition. And these profiles could have other configuration. You can as well configure the standard profile if you like to, but you can as well define as many custom profiles as you like. The properties of all of these profiles are the same. There is no difference between a standard profile and a, and a real profile. The only thing is if you start to assign a custom profile, for example, to the asset A1, then automatically all accounts of the A1 asset will get the new profile inherited. And if you take the same profile A1 and remove it from the asset A1 to assign it to the account A1ii, then you will see that all the others get the standard profile inherited again, but only the account A1ii gets new custom profile assigned. And as mentioned, you can have as many profiles as you like. The next thing is that it could be that there are other partitions as well in your safeguard installation and you can define as well profiles and custom profiles for these other partitions. The inheritances is the same then described. The only thing which is different is that any profile created for an other partition could not be used in another partition. That means if you create a profile somewhere in partition B, you cannot use that profile in partition A. And with that, it's time to look at these profiles and figure out what these profiles exactly can do for us. Okay, let's talk about partitions and profiles. As we have talk already talked about, uh, Safeguard has something in it that's called a partition. A partition is something like a logical container and bound to that logical container, there is a profile and this profile describes a couple of things that we're going to look into detail now. So if you want to handle partitions, go to settings and select the partitions entry. And you're going to see that safeguard comes with a default partition that is uh, defined out of the box. That's called macrocosm. I would recommend to leave that in place and just to generate a new partition and start all the things you want to do with your new partition. So just click on plus and name the partition as you want, like my test partition, whatever, and a description, whatever. And set a delegated owner. The owner of a partition comes into play later when we talk about notifications and uh, other things. So in this case, I just give it whatever all my users I have here in my users. So it is just possible to have multiple owners of that uh, partition. So you can just one, two, three, or whatever, how many you want. And if everything's fine, just click on add partition. Once you have created the partition, you're going to see that in the profile tab, a profile already created for you. It is usually named like the, uh, the name of your partition with the name profile appended. If you just click on this and edit it, you're going to see all that stuff that is inside this profile definition. And besides the general stuff, that's like the name and the description you have entered before, it is about check password, change password, account password rules and account discovery. So let's look into details of all these things. For the check password, this describes 
the following behavior of Safeguard. Safeguard maintains a database and uh, in this database it stores all, stores all the passwords for the accounts it's responsible for. And the accounts live on the assets and the assets are assigned, yeah, guess what, to a petition. And the petition, of course, has a profile. So this profile describes what to do with password checks. So password checks will be conducted by Safeguard, mostly manually or maybe on a scheduled base to see does the internal password I have in my database that it matches the password that is currently active on my asset for that specific account I manage. And to define this profile or this check, just go on plus, give it a name, and then you can select a schedule. The schedule now defines whenever this action is ex will be executed, maybe on a daily, weekly or monthly base. Maybe let's do it daily, give it a nice time of day, maybe around 2 a.m. And you can say, okay, repeat it daily, every day, every two day, every three day, whatever your security policies forces you to set here. And of course the time zone to make it right with all your operating times. And the other settings here, like change password and mismatch, is the thing, how should Safeguard behave if it detects that the password internally stored in the database is not the one that is currently active on the asset. So in this case, if you select it here, it will change the mismatched password of that account on that asset to a new one and will record the new one in the internal database. So it will override this. And if that happens, it is wise to select notify delegated owners on mismatch. Because what has happened now? Somebody seems to have changed the password out of safeguards control or knowledge. So usually that, that means that somebody has violated your security processes. And maybe the owner of your petition, who is responsible for all the assets in that petition, wants to know this, to, to track down who has violated the security process. Once you have set this, this, all this here, just click on OK. Next one is change password. It is pretty much the same as, as, the, as the one before, but it now deals with changing of passwords. As you know, Safeguard is changing passwords of accounts only. And you may have a security policy in place that forces you that all the passwords of the accounts you are managing needs to be changed on a fixed schedule. So maybe your security policy say, okay, any account I'm responsible for with Safeguard, please have it changed every 14 days, maybe or 30 days, whatever. Uh, even if they are used or unused before, doesn't matter. Just give it a proactive change so that it may, it's more difficult for people to guess the passwords or to reuse them. So just give it a, a change schedule name, a description, or you can say, I don't want to have it changed on, on your schedule base, I do it manually, or just define a schedule as before, maybe daily, whatever, 4, 4 a.m. time zone, any day. This value should be chosen with care, because depending on the amount of accounts you are managing, this may take time. And uh, so if you're taking care for maybe one half a million accounts, it may take a, a huge amount of time to change all the accounts on a daily basis. Maybe you'd have to define different schedules. But depends on your configuration, on your environment, and the amount of accounts you're responsible for. The other ones here is a little bit more specific. Once a password changes, it may conflict with the case that currently in that change window there is somebody working with that password. You may do this or you may not do this depending on the, on the work that's currently carried out. It depends on you if you select this. I wouldn't do, but uh, your security policy may force you to do different. On the other hand, if you have Windows services that have a fixed password or that have this password consumed or only consume a password once they have they were started, you may have to restart them to, to get the new password read in and to be able to run with the changed password. This is currently only for Windows, so if you have Windows services that are, rely on maybe an account they are using and the password is changed, they need to be restarted to run with the new password, just click this. Uh, here for the Windows tasks, otherwise leave them unchecked.
And the next one is the account password rule. And the account password rule is uh, very familiar. You should already know this. It is the rule how Safeguard should construct the passwords that will be used for the accounts that will be changed. So it will describe maybe how long the password is, how, co how the complexity is and so on and so on. It's pretty, that's pretty common. Maybe that can differentiate by system or by asset or by account or, or by technology, whatever. So you may define a couple of account password rules here. I don't care, but usually you just define a new one. That's this one here. And maybe you want to have the password starting at least have 12 characters, maybe up to 16, that you have a range. Maybe the first character must be alphanumeric, last character must be alpha alphabetic, uh, lowercase is minimum two, lowercase, whatever. Uh, allow symbols and uh, and special characters, maybe just one here, and you have to, to define what are the special characters you allow, something like that. It really depends what the end system is capable of. And once you have defined this, just click here and then you have the password uh, ruled for your accounts. And the account discovery, that is something that you can define here in that partition, how the accounts on your assets that are members of this um, partition, how the accounts should be looked for or how new accounts will be discovered on your assets part of that partition. And you can do it quite in the same way. You can just define a new one and then you can schedule it Maybe you just look for it every day and then you can say just leave it find all accounts or you can, can define a couple of rules and you can automatically manage found accounts if that is applicable or if not just leave it unchecked. And once you have defined all these things just click on OK and you have defined your new profile for your new partition.